The book of Revelation, the last book of the Holy Bible, 66 books of Holy Writ. 66 books make up the canon of Scripture. There's only one canon of Scripture, and the canon of the Word of God is what God's given and inspired to us. 1995 A.D. under the reign of Domitian, a Roman emperor, one of many monsters that persecuted the Church of God. The book of Revelation was finished, so the Bible was finished, thus finished God's eternal Word was finished at a time when God's people were being persecuted, suffering, hurting, dying, bleeding. For the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the book of Revelation unfolds for us the future. The first book in the Bible is the book of Genesis, Bereshit. In the beginning, the last book in the Bible is the book of Revelation. The Apocalypse is the unfolding into the future. So the first book of the Bible is from the beginning. The last book of the Bible is into the future. If you want to know what the future holds, open the book of Revelation. You're living in a time of, of, of today when the book of Revelation should be more alive to you than any time in your Christian life. We live in a time when I believe the book of Revelation is going to be fulfilled in your lifetime. The Apostle John was exiled on the outer Patmos for the Word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He was a true believer in the Son of God. I've been to Patmos. I've been to where he was exiled. I've looked out at the Aegean Sea and I've watched that cloud come down upon the water and watched it in its mysterious aspect. And I thought to myself time and time again, what did you see, John? How did you see this? How did he catch you up in the spirit and caught you into the future where you were able to look down and see what happened on this earth? And he truly did. The book of Revelation chapter number one and verse number five said, in verse five, note carefully what your Bible says. I want to read it for you. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, to him that the prince of the kings of the earth, to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. The book of Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. I want you to note carefully that's what the most important thing about the book of Revelation. 2,000 years ago, we did not have a magic man walking up on the earth, a man who simply performed miracles and did things and so forth. There's a whole lot more to him than simply what he did. The apostle John in the book of Revelation begins to unfold to you who he is. He begins to reveal for you the essence of the Lord Jesus Christ to tell you exactly this one that we believe in. Who is he? He said, I am the first and the last. That simply means that it all started with him. It'll all consummate with him. Everything that has to do with humanity and creation started with the Lord Jesus Christ. And my friend, it will consummate with him at his word. There was a time in eternity past, my friend, when he lived forever. I can't imagine a forever in the past, but there was a forever in the past. There will be a forever in the future. Think of time as an enormous expanse from the time that he called time to the time that time ends and is no more. It's just a little speck in that great sea of forever. Forever in the past, forever in the future, and you're going to be in one place or the other into forever. A little short lifespan on this earth is nothing compared with this one that is the first and the last. He said in Revelation 1.18, I am he that liveth and was dead. And he said, Behold, I'm alive forevermore. I think about the fact that he said, I am he that liveth. He literally said, I'm the living one. I'm alive with my life. It is the life of God. It is a life that knows no death. It is a life that cannot be killed. It is a life that cannot be taken from him. It is a life that is above all that. He must lay it down. And this is why 2,000 years ago when God became a man and he died upon the cross, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. They couldn't kill him. Nobody killed him. You can't kill God. It's an impossibility to kill him. But he laid his life down. I can't imagine for somebody doing something like that. What a wondrous thing for a dog like me. Yet he loved me and he washed me from my sins in his own precious blood. As I read the book of Revelation and it unfolds for us the essence and the, and the eternity and future for us, I begin to say to myself, my, what a marvelous, wondrous thing that I know a God like this. I live in the midst of people that soon will be panicking. They'll be running to and fro trying to figure out what's happening. And the Bible says the time will come when their hearts fail them for fear. Seeing those things that are coming upon this earth, friend, it's here now. You may be living in a cave and have your head buried in a television set and all you know is a ball game, but I'm I'm telling you right now, you better wake up. It's here now. It's already started. 
The Bible says in the book of Revelation, in the book of Matthew, chapter number 24, before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, there'll be a time of birth pains. It'll be like a woman in travail before she brings forth a child on this earth. She'll be going through birth pains. In plain words, she'll have her birth pains. She'll have her hurt. There'll be a feeling. There'll be a pain. There'll be a preparation. And he's giving us ample warning that that day is near. It's about here. He said, I am the first and the last. Thank God. He said, I am all the one that started it all. I'll be the one that ends it all. It was all made by me and for me. And without me, not anything was made that was made. In Revelation chapter number one, he said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And he said, Behold, I'm alive forevermore. Hallelujah. A lot of you like to keep him on the cross. Some of you like to keep him in the grave. Some of you like to get rid of him if you could. Wipe his name from the history books. But you can't do it. I'm sorry. He's more alive than anybody that ever wrote a history book. He lives today. You see, my friend, this first century Christians were literally being burned at the stake. They were suffering horrible torture and pain for their faith in Jesus Christ. The apostle Peter said, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that shall try you. And my friend, he was talking to people in certain terms about the fact that some of them were dying. And so the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation, he wants his church to know who he is. That'll prepare you for what's coming. Who is this one that cometh out of Edom with dyed garments from Bozra? Who is this one comes riding a white horse and the blood flying as high as a horse's bridle? Who is this one the Bible said, I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true that wears a crown and many crowns and he's the king of kings and lord of Lords, all the gods of this world are going to begin to scramble and run and hide for the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back to judge them. You see, the spirit world isn't as stupid as we are. They know what's going on. And they know that a world is beginning to be appeased. There's a great upheaval taking place. There's a shifting of power. There's a changing of continents. Old world is passing away. And a new world is about to arrive. And my friend, it's the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to come down to this world and he's coming in judgment. He's going to bring fire down from heaven. He turns the oceans into blood. He burns up the grass of the field. The dead comes up out of the grave, out of hell itself. And creatures that come up out of the pit come up out on the earth and sting men. And the Bible says that men will cry and beg for death and death will flee from them. You say that type sounds like some kind of a horror movie out of, uh, out of, out of Hollywood. No, Hollywood never saw in their life what the reality of the book of Revelation. You never saw a horror in your life like the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation said heaven is coming down and hell is coming up. That this earth is literally going to split asunder. It's going to be shaken from its very foundations. It's never going to go through a time like that it ever has before nor again. For the Bible said except those days should be shortened, no flesh should be left alive. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming again. Again. If I go, I'll come again to receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Come right now, at this very minute, amen. I look for his appearing. I have no hope in this world. I have no peace in this world. I have no stake in this world. My world is above. And I look for his appearing. The one that I serve, friend, is the king of eternity. He's the Lord Almighty of creation. He's the one that liveth from everlasting to everlasting. He's the one that's alive now with real life. I'm not talking about the stuff you're living in where you're going to drop and die and bury your body in the ground. Some people have never known life. I'm talking about a fire inside your soul. I'm talking about everlasting life. I'm talking about the life of God. I'm talking about setting you on fire. I'm talking about a life from above. I'm talking about something that did not originate with this earth. I'm talking about the very life of the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'm he that liveth was dead. And behold, John, behold, John, behold, John, I'm alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. 
When I think about one who says I was there, I tasted death. I went into its portals. I let its gates close behind me. I let its power wrap around me. I lay solemn in the grave. I let the power of death succumb. I succumbed to the power of death. I went down to the very halls and walls of death. Everything that death could possibly throw at me, I said, throw it. I'll take it. I died the death of all deaths. But I want you to know on the third day, on that third and appointed day, on the third day, on the third day, hail my friend in death and the bars of death, the place of death, the place of torment, the place could not hold him for the life that came, the life that was born and bosom in that resurrected Christ that came out of that tomb will live forever. Hallelujah. He said, I am he that lived and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. I'm 64 years old, and I'm more alive than some teenagers. Amen! Some of you mope around, and you got to have your electronics plugged in your head. you got to get on your social networking sites. you got to go through all that stuff day in and day out. And you get rid of the fidgety. I don't know what I'm going to do. I did this and that. And I want you to know something. What I got inside me is not plugged into this world. What's in me this morning came down from above. Amen. <laughs> Thank God for the day. Thank God for the coming. What a day that will be. For my Jesus I shall see. The Bible said I saw heaven opened. And when heaven opened, treasure of heaven came forth. When heaven opened, my friend, it wasn't the streets of gold. It wasn't the walls of jasper. It wasn't the gates of pearl. Oh, no. When heaven opened, my friend, it was the one that sat upon that horse. That's where the focus was upon. And the Bible said somebody followed him on white horses. What robed in red, white linen, fine and clean. That's me. I I'm coming right behind him. He's the captain of my salvation. I'll be right behind him. What are you coming for, preacher? Because we're going to come down here. And we're going to take the kingdoms of this world. We're going to take them by force. And they shall become the kingdoms of our Lord.